Okay, today we're going to talk about some angled pairs and the relationships that they share. And we're going to start by reviewing complementary angles. Complementary angles are any two angles whose measures add to 90 degrees. They could be completely separate from each other or attached, but as long as when you add the two angle measures together and it totals 90, they are complementary. Just a quick review as well that when you have an angle with this little square in the corner, that tells us that's a right angle and we're guaranteed to have 90 degrees involved. Supplementary angles are any two angles whose measures add to 180 degrees. Again, they could be completely separate or attached, but as long as there's only two angles and their measures add to 180, they're supplementary. Next, let's talk about adjacent angles. Adjacent angles are any two angles that share a vertex and a side. So let's hurry and review that uh, vocabulary. Here I have two angles, angles one and two. Both angles come to a single point right here called the vertex. The rays that are kind of shooting out from that vertex are called the sides. And here we have one ray that's common to both angle one and angle two, and we're going to call that the shared side. That makes these two angles adjacent. Here's another example of adjacent angles. Basically, they just have to be side by side and share a vertex. A linear pair actually combines adjacent with supplementary. I have two angles that have a, a vertex and a side in common, in other words, they're side by side, that form a 180 degree angle. Anytime you see two angles that form a straight line or straight angle, they're guaranteed to be a linear pair. Vertical angles actually require two lines that form an X formation. So here we have two lines that form an X and they don't have to be full lines, they can just be line segments. But notice how that X formation creates four different angles. Angles that are across from each other, like angles one and three, are called vertical angles. Two and four are also a pair of vertical angles. The nice thing about vertical angles, and I'll show you this later, because, for instance, one, the measures of angle 1 and angle 2 add to 180, but so do angles 2 and 3. That means that angles 1 and angle 3 have to be equal to each other. So there's a whole proof behind it that we'll do at a later time. But for now, just know that when you have a pair of vertical angles, their measures are always equal. Let's get down to a quick example. In this picture full of many, many angles, can you find a pair of vertical angles? Remember that vertical angles require an X formation. Be careful that you're not looking at, say, a K or an L or something similar. We do have a couple of lines that create an X, and angles 2 and 5 are across from each other on that X. So two and five are vertical angles. I can't say that one and four are vertical because they are not part of that X. Three and four, I cannot combine two angles and say that it's vertical with angle one. So two and five are our only pair of vertical angles in this picture. If we were to name a linear pair, there's actually two different linear pairs in this picture. Remember it's two angles side by side that form a straight line or a straight angle. So one and five would be a linear pair. So would angles one and angle two. That would be another linear pair. If we were asked to name a pair of complementary angles, that's fairly simple because there's only one guaranteed 90 degree angle in the picture. And that comes from our combination of angles two and three. So angle two and angle three are our complementary angles. 
Can you find a pair of supplementary angles? That's pretty simple because those are our linear pairs, right? 1 and 5 are supplementary, so are 1 and 2. But since I was only asked to name one pair, I'm going to stick with 1 and 5. And to name a pair of adjacent angles, there's a lot of angles in this picture that are adjacent. Because remember, adjacent angles are just side by side. They have a vertex in common, which all five angles do, and they share a side. So I could have picked from any of these angle pairs for adjacent angles. Next, let's talk about the angle addition postulate. It sounds very, very formal, but it's useful when we get to our proofs. An angle addition postulate stems from having a single angle. Now this, since we haven't talked about angles before, let's talk about naming this angle. We can call this angle, angle PQR, or I can call it angle RQP. Notice that I used all three letters, and what they have, what the two names have in common is that the vertex is the middle letter. That will always happen when you're naming an angle. If you have a single angle involved, sometimes you'll see this called simply angle Q, named for its vertex. But when you have more than one angle that starts happening on the page, generally those single letter names go away in favor of the three letter names which are more favored, or more appropriate I should say. There is also a difference, and you need to know this, between an angle name and an angle measure. Just like you have a name and you have, say, an age or a height that's, uh, that's given to you by, you know, in a value or number, so it does an angle have a name and a measure. Notice the difference between the two. The angle name simply has the angle symbol in front of the three-letter name while the angle measure has a lowercase m in front of that angle symbol. This is read the measure of angle PQR, and we would measure that angle in degrees. So let's continue on with this problem. Let's say that we have a point called point S inside of this angle, otherwise known as in the interior of angle PQR. And let's draw a ray from the vertex going through point S. Well, the angle addition postulate simply says that if I take the measure of angle PQS, this uh, smaller angle on the top, and I add that to the measure of angle SQR, the smaller angle on the bottom, that's going to give me the measure of the whole big angle PQR. So in other words, the two parts add together to equal the whole. That's the angle addition postulate. Let's use the angle addition postulate in an actual example. So here I have an angle EHG that's been split into two smaller angles. When you have a problem like this, the best thing that you can do for yourself is to label your picture. So let's take the information we're given and label our picture. Angle EHG is 85 degrees. Angle FHG, which is just the smaller angle to the right, is 52 degrees. And what we're asked to find is the measure of EHF, and I'm just going to call that X. Well, the angle addition postulate, remember, just says that the two that I can add the two smaller angles together to equal the whole big angle. So x plus 52 equals 85. And subtracting 52 from both sides gives me x equals 33. I don't want to leave my answer like that. Geometry is very formal in its notation. Since it asked me to find the measure of angle EHF, I'm going to state that the measure of angle EHF 
is equal to 33 degrees. Here we have a linear pair that we know form a straight angle. So first of all, there's, there's probably five different ways to do this problem. I'm just going to show you one of them. But I can add those two angle measures together. And since this forms a straight angle or a straight line, I know that they add to 180 degrees. Combining like terms, subtracting 156, and then dividing by 3 gives me x equals 8. I was first asked to find x, and we're done with that portion of the problem. Now it asks me to find the measure of angle IJL. IJL is just the 3x plus 25 portion of this angle. So let's take that 8 and plug it in for x. That means the measure of IJL is 49 degrees. So let's write our answer a little more formally. x equals 8 and the measure of angle IJL is 49 degrees. Here we have two angles that are very obviously forming a right angle. So these two angles we know for a fact are complementary. So we're asked to find the angle or the measure of angle MPN and the measure of angle NPO. Since we know that they're complementary, we can say that the two angles added together equal 90 degrees. Let's combine like terms, add 8 to both sides, and divide by 7, and I get x equals 14. Since it didn't ask me to find x, that's only part of the problem, but I needed to find x in order to find the two angle measures. So let's go ahead and plug 14 in for x. 5 times 14 is 70, and 2 times 14, and then subtract 8, gives us 20. So when we write our answer, you know, as formally as geometry requires, we're going to say, oh, I forgot to put the angle measures in here, measure of angle, there's supposed to be an angle symbol, MPN equals 70 degrees, and the measure of angle, NPO, equals 20 degrees. Here's another picture, and we have some new notation that we haven't seen before. See these little hash marks? That means that these two angles are equal to each other or congruent. So when this tells us in the problem that angle QTS is a 120 degree angle, we can actually split that in half and we know that both angles are 60 degrees. Again, there's many, many different ways to reason this problem out. This is just one of those ways. But I know, first of all, that I have two 60 degree angles. Then it tells us that angle RTS is 5x plus 15. We already know that that's a 60 degree angle, so I can say 5x plus 15 has to equal 60. Solving for x, I get x equals 9. Next, we were asked, we were asked to solve for x, which we've already done. And now we have to find the measure of angle QTR, which we already know is 60 degrees. So measure of angle QTR is 60 degrees, and x equals 9. In example 3, we have two lines that form an x shape. So we have some vertical angles that we can work with. First of all, we're given angle or the measure of angle ABC, that's 125 degrees. And now we know that the other three angles are either equal if they're vertical or supplementary if they're side by side. So first of all, we're asked to find the measure of angle EBD, that's this angle down here. And since it's vertical with the 125 degree angle, we know that's also 125 degrees. Angle ABE, 
forms a linear pair with angle ABC, so we know they have to add to 180. If I subtract 125 from 180, I'm left with 55 degrees. CBD is vertical from ABE, so it's also 55 degrees. Don't forget that ABC and EBD are congruent since they're vertical angles, and the other angles are supplementary to angle ABC. Let's do one more vertical angle practice. We have a set of vertical angles in the picture. Um, we know that they are congruent to one another, so I can set them equal to each other and solve for x, and I get x equals 15. Next, it asks me to find the measure of C, B, D. Since its vertical angle is 60 degrees, so is the measure of angle CBD, or I could plug 15 in for X and find it that way. The measure of angle ABC forms a linear pair with our 60 degree angle, so when I subtract 60 from 180, I'm left with a 120 degree angle. And EBD has to also be 120 degrees. Now you try. Go ahead and draw this picture on a piece of paper, label the angles that are given, and let's see if you can't find the measure of angle 3 and the measure of angle 4. Pause the video while you work it out. Make sure to label your picture and pay attention to angles that are congruent or supplementary if you're having a hard time. The measure of angle 3 ends up as 50 degrees, and the measure of angle 4 is 130 degrees. If you got it right, great! If not, pause the video and go back and check your math. Alright, that's going to wrap it up for today. Sorry this one took a little longer, but I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.